We all have heard of inflation going out of control in recent headlines. You may have thought that there's nothing you could really do about it. At the same time, you may have experienced the real effects of inflation in your everyday life as prices for basic things like groceries and gas have started to increase while your income hasn't really changed. Today, I'll be covering basics of inflation and current market conditions, how it directly affects you, and investments that tend to do well and hedge against inflation with BMO ETFs, the sponsor of today's video. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. For those who are new, I'm a tax expert and CPA, and here on my channel, I like to talk about everything money, such as investing, saving, budgeting, tax tips, and ultimately how to grow your wealth. In today's video, I'll be talking about inflation investing, and my favorite way is through ETFs. I've personally invested and mentioned BMO ETFs in past videos, as they offer some of the most comprehensive and low-cost ETFs in Canada, and have been around since 2009. BMO ETFs are made in Canada for Canadians with over 26% market share in the Canadian ETF space and can be found on any self-directed online brokerage. That is why I'm excited to be partnering with BMO on today's video and want to thank BMO for sponsoring this video. Feel free to visit www.bmoetfs.com to take a look through all of BMO ETFs that are available to suit your investing needs. Now, without further ado, let's get started on today's video. Inflation 101 and current market update. Inflation is the decline of purchasing power of a given currency over time. This means that the Canadian dollar is worth less today than it was a couple of years ago. In fact, according to a study released by Bank of Canada, the Canadian dollar lost more than 94% of its value between 1914 and 2005, and probably a lot more. To put this into perspective, $1 in 1914 would have the same purchasing power of $17.75 in 2005 dollars. And it's estimated that a dollar will lose half of its purchasing power in approximately 35 years. To further put into perspective how the value of dollar has changed over time, let's take a look at the cost of staples such as food. If we take a look at the cost of beef per pound, in 1900 it was only 14 cents, whereas in 2005 it was $6.99. That is almost a 5,000% increase. You can see in this chart here that the dollar is losing purchasing power at a dramatic decline, and it's expected to accelerate in the next few months if inflation is not reined in by the Bank of Canada. In fact, the Bank of Canada and the US Federal Reserve both stated in 2021 that they will allow inflation to run beyond the 2% target that they have been maintaining with no hard ceiling specified. Now, how the Bank of Canada keeps track of inflation is via the Consumer Price Index, also known as CPI, which represents changes in prices as experienced by Canadian consumers. It measures price change by comparing through time the cost of a fixed basket of approximately 700 goods and services, which are divided into eight major components, food, shelter, household operations, furnishings and equipment, clothing and footwear, transportation, health and personal care, recreation, education and reading, and alcoholic beverages, tobacco products, and recreational cannabis. We are able to measure CPI by comparing the purchasing power of comparable basket of goods and services over time. For example, if a basket of goods and services were purchased in 1914 for $100, a comparable basket would now cost about $2,364 in 2021. You may be wondering how inflation now compares to the past few years. You can see that inflation hasn't been this high since 2003, which is 19 years ago. While we've been told that inflation is transitory by the authorities, it appears unlikely that it will settle down anytime soon, and there's a high chance that inflation will continue to be above 2% as the pandemic continues and lockdowns are still a thing. Per Bank of Canada, the average inflation rate of goods in 2021 has been 4.4%, much higher than that of services, which has been 2.1%. In the 20 years before the pandemic, goods inflation averaged only 1.4%. A combination of factors collided that have squeezed inflation to go rampant and have put upward pressure on prices. First, printed stimulus money that flooded into the economy during 2020 and 2021 are at historical levels. This means that households have more money to spend on goods and at the same time, amount of goods haven't changed. 
This alone would increase the prices of goods as there are more demand. To make matters worse, there are actually shortages of certain goods and they are becoming more expensive to produce as there are supply chain disruptions that have delayed shipping. Energy price increases as the economy reopens and shortage of workforces that have both delayed production and increased input costs as wages have increased to incentivize front load workers. The full effects of the pandemic on the economy has yet to show and there is a high likelihood that there are going to be some rough patches ahead. So what and how does this affect me? Inflation has been managed by the Bank of Canada and maintained on average of 2% per year through fiscal policies such as policy interest rate increases. However, inflation has now averaged 4.7% in 2021, with salary and wages not really keeping up for the majority. In the most recent CPI report for December alone, the CPI for Canada was up 4.8% and the US shows 7%, which indicates that despite CPI being a backward-looking metric, the numbers have been rising consistently throughout the year. The current market outlook for annual inflation is about 3% for the next five years, which is above the initial inflation target of 2%. You may have noticed that it has become more difficult to buy certain things such as cars and computer hardware and chips, pushing up the prices significantly. Even your everyday goods and services such as your grocery bills or eating out at a restaurant seem to have gotten a bit more expensive. This is because some businesses are suffering from the previously mentioned factors of supply chain issues, energy price increases, and shortage of workers on top of increased cost-related COVID-19 related expenses, such as investing in PPE, sanitary requirements, and increased wages for frontline workers. Ultimately, these costs are pushed forward to consumers such as you and me. Inflation is pervasive and it's important to be proactive with your money so it doesn't get eaten away by inflation. If you just have cash sitting in your bank account, earning at best 0.5% with policy interest rates at an all-time low of 0.25%, which has recently increased by 0.25% by the Bank of Canada, cash is essentially eroding away as inflation rates are growing an average of 4.7% in 2021. That is a lot of numbers, but you can clearly see that something is simply not adding up. So what can you do with your cash instead? One of the best ways to at least have your cash afloat with increasing inflation is to invest it. Fixed income investments such as bond yields are low risk, but a five-year government of Canada bond provides a measly yield of 1.5%, which is above a bank savings account of 0.5%, but below inflation of 2 to 4%. Equities such as stocks tend to do a better job of protecting against inflation than fixed income as you can potentially benefit from the value of your investment increasing while receiving payouts. Let me explain. As a customer, you are suffering from price increases as a company pushes those costs onto you. On the flip side, as an investor, you can potentially keep up with inflation as companies aim to keep up their profits and rely on shareholder benefits to you if stocks appreciate in value and through dividend payments. However, there are certain asset classes that actually hedge better than others, which we will be discussing next. So how do I hedge against inflation? I'll be discussing some equity asset classes that protect against inflation. So make sure that you stay until the very end as I'll be going in depth on my personal favorite. The first hedge against inflation are high quality blue chip companies as they are more resilient to inflation as they tend to have better pricing power and have an easier time passing on higher input costs to end consumers. They also tend to have healthier financials and lower debt, which will be less of a burden on interest payments when rates increase. BMO's MSCI US High Quality Index ETF, ticker symbol ZUQ, provides exposure to these type of companies. Though if you are a fan of S&P 500 Index ETFs, then it will also cover a lot of these large cap companies. Another hedge against inflation are commodities such as oil and gas, which are priced in real terms. With the economy reopening and supply imbalances, there has been a sharp demand for oil and gas. BMO's Equal Weight Oil and Gas Index ETF, ticker symbol ZEO, provides exposure to the Canadian energy sector. Though keep in mind, oil and gas investments can do well, but also tend to be quite volatile. Infrastructure also holds up well when inflation rises, as some of these companies even index their revenues to inflation and have long-term government contracts. You may have heard of the U.S. spending $1.2 trillion on infrastructure with Biden's bill passed and the government of Canada committing to spend $180 billion on infrastructure for the next 12 years, which started in 2016. Now, my personal favorite and the 
investment I'll be focusing on as a hedge for inflation for this video is real estate. Like physical goods, real estate is considered a hard asset, something that is tangible and property values tend to increase during inflationary periods. Everyone needs a place to live and work right. In addition, commercial and office spaces can potentially benefit as the economy continues to open up and as people return to the offices. Now, going out to buy real estate properties tends to be too expensive and too big of a commitment for many people. Instead, the easier way to invest in real estate and according to your financial situation is through real estate investment trusts, also known as REITs. REITs are companies that own or finance real estate properties and earn rental income. REITs are required to meet many requirements to qualify as REITs and to be listed on the stock market. In addition, they are required to pay out at least 90% of their taxable income to shareholders. In inflationary times, not only can REITs appreciate in value if real estate prices continue to increase, but they could also provide decent payouts to you as an investor in the form of dividends. BMO has equal weight REITs index ETF ETF, ticker symbol ZRE, which is composed of various real estate investments in Canada. To give you some more details and stats on this ETF, the market price is around $27.44 per share as of March 9th, 2022, which is a very reasonable entry point. The benchmark is against the Selective Equal Weight Canada Read Index. ZRE had a return of 34.02% in 2021, which actually beat the S&P 500. Its three-year average return is 10.9% as of February 28th, 2022. Keeping in mind, 2020 actually experienced negative returns of 7.69% due to the start of the pandemic. And remember that, of course, past performance is not an indicator of future returns. My favorite part of this read are the dividends, which are paid out on a monthly basis with an annualized yield of 3.95%, so almost 4%, as of February 28th, 2020. This read provides broad exposure to the Canadian REIT universe instead of just focusing on residential and office spaces. As you can see in the sector allocations, there is a good mix of retail, residential, industrial, office, and and healthcare and consists of 22 top Canadian REITs with total net assets of 813 million. Lastly, the management fee is 0.55%, which is comparable to other Canadian REIT ETFs and might actually be on the lower end. If you want to do your own research on REIT ETFs or other ETFs for that matter, BMO has a great comparison tool which I'll be linking in the description box down below for you to check out. I've previously mentioned in my dividend ETF video that I'm investing in XRE, but I'm able to see that investing in ZRE, BMO's REIT ETF, provides further diversification to my portfolio. XRE and ZRE are two Canadian REIT ETFs from the two largest providers in Canada. The main difference between the two ETFs is that XRE is market cap weighted and ZRE is equal weighted. The benefit of an equal weighted method is that it avoids concentration risk of a single stock. As you can see in XRE's holdings, Canadian apartment properties and RioCan make up almost 25% of the entire portfolio, which presents concentration risk. On the other hand, as you can see in ZRE's holdings here, there is more diversification in equal weight as there is no single REIT that takes up more than 6% of the portfolio, with the greatest holding being Boardwalk at 5.98%. And because I value diversification and want to add more real estate to my portfolio and hedge against inflation at the same time, I am also investing in ZRE. Please do your own research and determine what's best for you for your unique investment profile. If you want to learn more about the Compare tool as well as BMO's ETFs, you could check out the comprehensive list here, which I'll also be linking in the description box down below. If you learned something from this video for inflation investing, remember to give this video a thumbs up as well as subscribe and hit the notification button for more videos on financial health and building your wealth. Just a quick disclaimer here that I am not a financial advisor and this video is not financial advice, but for informational purposes only. If you enjoy this video and want to watch more, feel free to check out my other videos, which I'll be linking here. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.